Hello everyone, it's time to read one of our stories in English now. I chose this book called I Love My Hair by Natasha Anastasia Parkman, illustrated by E.B. Lewis. I chose this book because I um, grew up not liking my hair so much. It's a little frizzy right now, but it used to be very curly and very big and very frizzy, and I didn't know what to do with it. My mom didn't know what to do with it. She has straight hair. So I grew up not liking my hair very much. And it wasn't until I got older and I saw people, more people with hair like mine and learned how to take care of it um, that I started to really love my hair and how beautiful it is and um, really appreciate it. So I chose this book for my classroom and it's one of my favorites. So let's read it together. I love my hair. in this book. It's gorgeous. Every night before I go to bed, Mama combs my hair. I sit between her knees, resting my elbows on her thighs like pillows. Mama is always gentle. She rubs coconut oil along my scalp and slowly pulls the comb through my hair. But sometimes it still hurts. When Mama gets to especially tangled places, I try my hardest not to cry, sucking in my breath and pressing my hands together until they're red. You see, she's trying so hard. She's so brave. But a few tears always manage to squeeze out. Mama, stop, I cry when I can't stand the comb tugging at my hair any longer. Her hair is gorgeous. My hair is not like her hair, but her hair is beautiful. Mama puts the comb down and rubs my hurting places. Then she leans in close to me, like she has a big secret to tell. Do you know why you're so lucky to have this head of hair, Kiana? She asks. I shake my head no. Because it's beautiful and you can wear it in any style you choose. I can spin your hair into fine, soft yarn, just like our grandmothers did at their spinning wheels, and weave it into a puffy little bun. Let's see if she spins it that way. Or I can part your hair into straight lines and plant rows of braids along your scalp, the way we plant seeds in our garden, then wait and watch for them to grow. You see her braids like that? In the morning, before we walk to the store, Mama adds colorful beads to the ends of my braids. The beads click to the rhythm of my walk helping me remember what we're going to buy. Tap, tap, clicky, clack, milk, bread, peanut butter. Folks on the street look at me and smile as I dance along to the tap, tap, clicky, clacky music my hair makes just for me. She looks like she's having so much fun. Some days I just let my hair be free to do what it wants, to go any which way it pleases. Then my hair surrounds my head like a globe. This is my Afro style. Look at that, it looks like she has the whole universe in her hair. How cool. Once when I wore it, the kids at school teased me. My head felt heavy and I let it hang down low. But my teacher made me feel better. She said that when she was growing up, folks counted their hair as a blessing. Wearing an afro was a way for them to stand up for what they believed, to let the world know that they were proud of who they were and where they came from. I think it's amazing. I love my hair. 
because it is as thick as a forest, soft as cotton candy, and curly as a vine winding upward, reaching the sky and climbing toward outer space. Look at her imagining her fruit turning into that vine. Today, I'm wearing it in my favorite style of all. Two ponytails that stick out on either side of my head and flap in the air like a pair of wings. One of these days, I just might take off and fly. Wouldn't that be something? The end. Well, I hope you like that story.